Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to the 2013 Christmas Tournament Casts. I'm Shadow Fury 33, your commentator, or at least one of them. And we shall begin today by first going over who is playing this tournament. So in this tournament, we have Vermind and Haiku, that is the first match we are watching. J Raccoon vs. Electro, that we'll be watching tonight as well. Shalka vs. Sharadan, and Myself vs. Aragant. God, Monkuki, Cybernetic Pony, and Kaiden have been seeded to round two due to their skill. Whereas the rest of us are fighting out battle to the death to determine who to fight in a battle to the death. For several battles to the death, we're going to die several times during this. So, get your amulets of life saving on. Wait, no, wrong game. Okay, but still, prepare for plenty of matches, lots of good play, and people fighting as if it was for their lives and to the death. We shall start out with Vermind versus Haiku, and that will be game one on Act Natural. So, Vermind is starting out in the lower left corner of the map, the southwest corner. He has not chosen a species yet. While Haiku, on the other hand, at the northeast corner, is going for CISO. Now, unfortunately, I haven't really seen Haiku or Vermind play a whole lot recently. They are old guard players. They have been in this for a very long time. I think Haiku came in during the beta and Vermind either beta or early alpha. At any rate, both of these players have been playing this game for years. Though, admittedly, some went on and off. Vermind is going for Vekir. And is starting out pretty basic. Getting some scouting going on, getting his Zion Veer in place to build more resource processors. Pretty typical. Haiku, as well, appears to be going... Actually, doesn't look like he's decided what he's planning on doing yet. Sending out a Marine to scout. Pretty typical. And keeping a Special Ops Marine at home. So he appears to be a little bit worried about Vermind going for some aggression. Keeping his Special Ops at home rather than sending it forward, which I've actually seen a few times in more recent casts, or more recent games. CISO player will send their Special Ops forward with the Marine and use that to try to disrupt their opponent. I've noticed it more frequently in CISO versus Grekin matches, rather than CISO versus Vekir matches, but it is something I have noticed. And it looks like Haiku very quickly getting a factory and an armory. It looks like he's going for a pretty quick, aggressive opening. He's wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a few ATHCs. He hasn't gotten any Q Plasma yet, though he could very quickly move one of these RPs over if he wanted to. And a small meetup in the center. We see Haiku does not seem to care yet. Vermon, on the other hand, also doesn't seem to care too much. His forces did engage a bit, but have disengaged since Haiku was simply moving into Vermine's base. Haiku much more focused on figuring out what Vermine is up to, and what Vermine is up to is a strong economic opening. Vermine has no real defenses, and at this point, it doesn't look like he might have to worry about it. We'll see. Haiku looks like he's planning on going for ATHCs, and... But I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure what we will find out over the course of this game what exactly Haiku's strategy overall is. But I haven't really seen him play much since before CISO started out with an importer, when CISO used to start out with an armory instead. Now, Vermin, on the other hand, is... Now, okay, apparently not too worried about this. Actually, it looks like Vermin managed to take care of Haiku's Marine. Yeah, it looks like that is quite possibly the case. Haiku appears to have gotten the information he needs, though. So he knows what... Vermine is up to, and actually he's going for an all-out rush with his forces. This is interesting. I want to see where this plays out. Looks like he will be able to take out this Tethvir and Shinvir. Vermine, on the other hand, about two minutes up from there, right at the present. Continue to expand, continue to macro in the present, as I always recommend doing. But it looks like he is going to have to worry about the past pretty soon, seeing as Haiku is actually going a bit further. He's placing a forward factory this time around. He is not messing around. It looks like Haiku is definitely trying to go for an aggressive opening in the first game. And to my understanding, that's typically what's a good idea to do in tournaments, is the first game, neither player has won. You have, it's a best of three, so you have another match. If you lose the first match, you can still get away with, you can basically get away with a risky strategy in the opening match. Because the other two matches, it's going to be harder. You're going to have to win both of them, but you still have those matches there. It's also an interesting idea to do if you've won the first match. It's a bit safer in that case, because you don't have to win another match. You've already guaranteed winning one match. But Haiku looks like he is not doing something that risky. This doesn't actually look that risky. It looks like what he's actually doing is going for a bit of a wall-in. 
The factory isn't quite close enough to the choke point for it to work out entirely, but I'm not surprised, I would not be surprised if that was the idea. If this wasn't a forward factory for the purposes of being aggressive, but rather for being defensive. On Act Natural, given that there's a choke point right here and another one right here, that would not surprise me. Now, Haiku on the other hand, sorry, Vermont on the other hand, he is not deviating too much. He's continuing to go with economy. Granted, we are back at the 1 minute 20 mark, so we haven't seen all the stuff he's built up. Now, if we jump further into the present, we do see that Vermind is taking a fair amount of damage from Haiku's forces in the present. So Haiku, his attack is actually dealing quite a bit of damage. Though it looks like Vermind has managed to get around this. Has, did he send his... No, he sent a Tethir and a Shinvir. No real change, just that it looks like Haiku... Did Haiku move... I think Haiku moved his forces forward. He's... Moving them back a bit, but unfortunately for Haiku, he has lost his special ops permanently. That's in the unplayable pass. That is gone. That is dead. Smarine is trying to avenge its fallen brother, but that won't work. That Tethvir takes it out. Tethvir, Shinvir, dangerous combo on the... They can easily snipe out single units just because the Tethvir is tanging for the Shinvir. The Shinvir has pretty good range and decent damage. And no, it looks like Haiku ultimately managed to get around that. I did not notice the change in orders, but yes, Haiku ultimately managed to save that special ops. And it looks like... Oh. The reason I didn't notice the change in orders is because it was Vermine's orders that changed. He moved his scouts back. Not bothering to fight Haiku's forces, instead just keeping them back at home. I suppose because he anticipated Haiku going for an aggressive opener, but... Okay, now Haiku's going... This is a proxy. This is not really a proxy. This is a bit forward, but like I said, a few tiles to the left and it would be a wall-in. Or at least a partial wall-in. Having a factory here is a proxy, but we'll see if Haiku commits to that. I'm not sure if he is. I mean... As you can see from his current point of view, no, he appears to be going for it, and actually he is near the... He is very near the unplayable past. While Vermont, on the other hand, definitely focusing much more on economy in the present. Much, much more on economy in the present. If this pays off, I mean, this is going to be very interesting, because Haiku is basically banking on this proxy working. And if it works, then Vermind is still in a position where he can go back, and he has a couple minutes to go back and change around some things. Rebuild, but get some more defenses and so forth. But it looks like Vermine's basic goal is to just power through economy. End up getting a pretty decent army, possibly chronoport them back, but definitely get a very decent army. He's going for he is playing for the mid to late game. Haiku is playing for the early game win. And also apparently forgetting that factories do in fact trap their units that they're dealing with, and they don't allow them just to leave. Although, actually, that was weird. This ATHC should be able to get out of that. In fact, I have no idea why Haiku did that. I don't think the ATHC is blocked. I'd have to double check that, but I'm fairly certain this ATHC could get out, and then the ATHC next to it could get out afterwards. But apparently they got blocked, so that's unfortunate. Rather tricky placement there. Anyway, the proxy factory is the important part of the story, though. Now, Vermin, on the other hand, has jumped back. He appears to be a bit suspicious. Although, will he find it? I think he... I think he won't. But we'll see. The Shinvir is... Might. Shinvirs do have pretty good sight range, so it might be able to spot that factory, but it isn't it hasn't spotted it yet. Going up the ridge, and this is what we are looking for. No, it hasn't spotted it, and the HACs are coming in. A limit which isn't really an indication of a proxy factory, though it might end up arousing some suspicion in Vermine's mind. Now Haiku on the other hand, jumping back, the 438 mark, he is going back, and we see this is a damage he inflicted on his own factory, destroying it. So at this point, Haiku is entirely focused on this proxy and hasn't actually used it for anything yet. He has very little Q Plasma, only 8 Q Plasma at the moment. That is not doing him any favors. Though, I imagine he's going to be getting more Q Plasma soon. He can easily move one of these RPs over to get the Q Plasma. But, this is getting kind of annoying. I mean, sorry, not annoying. It's probably annoying for him, I should say. It's probably annoying for him that he has no Q Plasma. Sorry, not for me. I don't, it's not annoying for me. This is entertaining for me. But I'm just thinking, from Haiku's point of view, lacking Q Plasma is kind of annoying, but it looks like he does in fact have Q Plasma income, so he will be just... Or does he have Q Plasma income? Mm, hard to say. I, I think... He does, that's right. Okay, I'm blind, that's why. Q Plasma's over in the northwest corner, but I knew... I was sure he had Q Plasma income somewhere. And getting armory, so it looks like he is going for a heavy infantry follow-up. You don't get two armories to expand. You get two armories because you're going to build a lot of infantry and going to push them forward. And I can see why. He does a second importer. He has a lot of reserves. Not a whole lot of cube plasma income, but quite a lot of liquid crystal income. And we do see some infantry already being used with his forces. And Vermind is jumping back as well. He does have a depot built up, but this is where it really comes to the big test. 
If this depot gets up and his units are alive, he is going to throw them in, get a bunch of vehicles, and just win this outright. But he has to save them, and unfortunately he lost his Zion Veer. That's a pretty big loss. The Teth Veer, all, all of his Veer class units going down. He needs to build vehicles. He needs to hard build vehicles. He can't use infantry to make it any easier. This is going to be difficult. So Haiku is going in for the kill. Just come from Haiku's point of view. It's a bit further in the past. Haiku going for the kill, getting up an armory just to be sure. Gonna be building some infantry inside there. I think Haiku may have this game. I, I'd i like to see what Vermont has in mind. He does have more units, more Zion Pulsars coming in to try to deal with the ATFCs, but that looks like it's not going to be able to do too much, unfortunately. The, some of the ATCs will go down, and this is definitely a valiant effort by Vermine, but I don't think it'll pay off. I think Haiku's proxy will manage to get it out of this, but it looks like Vermine may actually be... It, no, actually is paying off. Vermine is managing with these foundations, thanks to these foundations to get out of here, but Haiku is a minute down, and that's what really matters. And it looks like Haiku will ultimately be on top on this one, getting rid of the depot before those secondary foundations were built. Note the foundations were built from the depot, so this is basically game. Vermine is not paying attention at this point in time. He seems to think he is one, although he probably is suspicious and will be going back fairly soon, I'm sure. But yes, Haiku... Or Vermine might be trying to get... Is he trying to get gate tech? That would be so awesome, but kind of sad if he was, because he doesn't have a chance if he has gate tech. If he has tried, tries to get gate tech, he'd need to go about here, I think, if he has an even remote chance. But yeah, that's... That's kind of sad. So unfortunately, Vermine has... He is. He now knows that what has happened to his base. He does know that he has basically been hit hard by a proxy. And Haiku, the proxy paid off. Unfortunately, Vermine's strategy, his late game economy based strategy, he's still going for it. He's still pushing Hort. Might try to build up a depot on these, but it's doesn't look like it's going to work out. He does have enough resources to keep pushing some more foundations. I, I think he's gone. I think this is it. And Vermine. Throws in the towel, so that is game one to Haiku. So Vermind has lost game one. We'll be going on to game two very shortly, so stay tuned. Welcome back, Acron fans! This is Game 2 between Vermine and Haiku in the first round of the 2013 Christmas Acron Tournament. I am Shadow 33 I continue to be Shadow 33 and we shall begin now, as I am rambling. So, we're on Tomb of Heroes for Game 2. Vermind is in the east side of the map, and Haiku is on the west side of the map. Haiku, once again, seems to be going for CISO, and Vermind sticking with Vekir. Now, of course, I probably shouldn't point that out. Because it is a tournament match, players will likely not be changing race within the tournament. Though I do know there is a random player. I'm pretty sure it's Shalka. I would have to double check. But Shalka has a typically random inclination to him. He very much likes going random. He's never really committed to a species, as far as I know. So, that's probably him. But still, not sure who it is offhand. So, I think that it's... Still worthwhile, just to mention. But yeah, for the most part, people will just be sticking with their species. Anyway, Vermind is very quickly going for... Sorry, Haiku is very quickly going for Scout with his opening infantry. Now, bear in mind, Haiku did win game one, so he can go for Risky Strategy this game, and maybe it'll pay off. Though, this is Tomb of Heroes, and as you can see, Tomb of Heroes is a fairly large map. It does have a direct, or somewhat direct path. You have to kind of go down and then up again. It's a f moderately direct path between bases. But, I have seen a lot of proxy strategies done here, usually involving the north part of the base here, because the south part isn't particularly useful, there's an expansion there, it's likely your opponent will see what's going on. But this north section is mostly dead, there's not a whole lot of, there's a lot of space here for building, but there's not a whole lot of resources, so most players don't hang around here checking things out. It's a great spot here and on this bridge here, those are great spots for sticking proxy buildings. And it looks like we do have the scouts meeting up in the middle at the present, both players are probably committing to this, but we'll see what happens actually on their commands. That's simply at the present. Haiku is going along the north base. He is actually very quickly building up, going for another proxy strategy. I am not surprised, because that worked out from last game, and like I said, Tomb of Heroes can support proxy strategies pretty well. Though, 
he is doing it in the center of the map, and like I said, they're typically done over here. I'm though not entirely surprised they is doing it here, because like I said, they are typically done over here. Bear that in mind. Vermind is not a new player. He's probably well aware that that's the sort of thing that will happen. Although I'm not sure how experienced he is with this particular map, but it is something that does happen. Like, this is not something new. And it looks like he is, in fact, going up north. He is actually checking this out. He's going across the north bridge just to make sure, and he will spot Haiku's proxy. So Haiku is going to have to be careful about this. And, okay, Haiku is going for a hard proxy, building an armory on Vermine's main base platform. Now that is gutsy. Now, of course, in this iteration, Vermine's scouts went along the south, but looks like up... Uh, further up, they were going north. And they haven't been hurt. So no, this is actually not the iteration where they go further north. Apparently Vermind went and did that further in the past. So Haiku will have his stuff spotted, he will have his proxy spotted, and the proxy has not started building anything yet. Curious. I think he probably just hasn't gone back to notice. He's probably going to just double check when it's done and then build as soon as he can from there. And now Vermind has spotted it. He does see the proxy, or at least the Marine building the proxy. And Haiku... It has been exposed. Vermind is well aware of what's going on. We are looking at Vermind's point of view. He knows what's up. And Haiku, unfortunately, is losing his Marine. That was moving forward to build further proxy buildings. So Vermind knows what's going on. He's going to be countering this. He's probably not going to go for the same sort of late game mass economy that he did last time. Looks like he was planning on doing so. Because the thing is, that strategy is actually pretty safe in Akron. I mean, having a lot of economy, especially as Vekir, is extremely important. If you can get away with having a dozen or a dozen and a half resource processors as Vekir, you are golden. But the thing is, you have to make sure you actually live that long. And Vermine is doing what he can to, apparently, to make sure that is in fact the case. Moving forward with some Zion Beer, possibly for further scouting, double checking for proxies maybe, but he has seen the proxy. This is the important part, he knows the proxy. And Haiku, it looks like he is changing up his game plan considerably, making sure that Vermine does not know about these proxies, and in fact getting rid of these forces before it becomes a problem. So Haiku will ultimately be building this proxy up again. And Vermind, jumping back to his point of view, now that he knows the proxy is happening, it looks like he is not too focused on just keeping his units alive, probably double-checking when forces will be coming in from that proxy, under the assumption that Haiku is continuing to build that proxy, which is not an unsafe assumption. Especially since Haiku is actually being more aggressive with this proxy construction than he was in the first iteration. Nope, he is going back to the same iteration. Okay, so he hasn't changed ultimately too much of what he's doing. But he is going to be probably... No, nope, going for that armory. Yeah, he, basically everything's the same. So Haiku, main problem is that he does have some more orders being given. This marine is starting to get distracted by its commander. And the factory has been placed. So Haiku does have his proxy set up properly. And it looks like, unfortunately, Twitch is being a bit wonky. <sighs> anyway. Vermind is just going up, getting up with his forces, trying to get a better position for the proxy that's coming in. And the Marine to build the armory is not going down. That will actually build that armory, no problem. It ultimately is going to die, but this armory is building up too quickly. Now that armory is right there, more importance have been built. So Haiku is going very hard for a proxy. Now, bear in mind, Haiku does not have a strong of an economy as Vermine does, so this will come down to how well Vermine can actually stop this proxy, how much he's able to keep intact. Because the thing is, Vermine does have the advantage of not losing it, and it looks like he is putting his test beer right in the way. Nicely done! Getting it in the way of the armory. Cheapest way to get rid of an armory is just to stop it from being built in the first place. But it looks like that may not be the ultimate iteration that he's doing. No, Vermine unfortunately did that a bit too late, so... He will have to block it, the more expensive way of actually shooting it to death. But Haiku instead, once again, trying to secure the area before building his proxy. Jumping back to his point of view, he is indeed trying to secure the area, but losing that to a Zion Veer. Lancers are coming in anticipation of Zion Pulsers. And that is not a bad strategy. Haiku does have enough Q-Plasma to be able to maintain this strategy in the long term, so that is going to work out fairly well. Getting ATHCs as well, his, his strategy is entirely going to rely on speed, and I don't know if Vermind is going to predict that Lancers will be coming. If he does, we'll see Teth Pulsers. If not, we'll see Zion Pulsers. Or rather, if he does predict the right strategy, we'll see a mix of the two. Because Lancers, big reason CISO uses Lancers in this situation is that 
Vekir Zion Pulsars are often the go-to unit for Vekir, but the thing with Zion Pulsars is that they are not anti-air at all. They cannot hit air. They're one of the few units in the game that cannot hit air at all. Lancers, of course, being air units, are essentially a perfect counter to them until the Zion Pulsar itself dies and the Zion Veer starts fighting back. As we can see right now, the Zion Veer actually does a pretty good job against Lancers, especially when Foundation supported. Most especially when Foundation supported. So, now that he knows the Lancers are there, I expect Teth Pulsar. There we go. That is exactly what I expect. The Vermind is doing a really good job defending it this time around. He is not trying too hard to get economy. It looks like he does have a Zion Veer going out, though. That Zion Veer will be able to rebuild more economy if he wants it to. Build more RPs just around the map as he wishes. It's a bit tricky to do, though, because he is going to have to basically hold off wave after wave of enemy forces while slowly building up his economy. It, he's going to have to very carefully balance this out, but I think with the foundations helping him out in the depot as well, that he will be able to do this. Two Zion Pulsars are coming in. Very good choice. With the ATCs coming in, that will pretty much perfectly counter this. I think Vermind has the defense in the bag. The question will be how will Haiku push this forward? Because right now, what Haiku can do is build up he probably won't, and I can't say I blame him, but he might build up R RPs just behind this proxy. It would be slightly uncommon, it's not the strongest way of pushing the proxy, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did that, because if he does that, then it becomes harder for Haiku to be countered. Now, like I said, that's not commonly done, because it does require diverting resources from units into RPs, and the thing is, when you're doing a harassment strategy, what you really want to do is try to destroy, either force your opponent into building stuff that they don't need, which is kind of hard to do in Akron, actually, overall. it's There aren't a lot of things you can't make use of. Well, the other thing you might want to do, or often done, is to damage the economy directly. So you're trying to not so much make your economy grow faster than your opponent's, but rather make your opponent's economy grow slower than yours. And it looks like Haiku will be attacking from the north to accomplish this exact goal. And it looks like he's doing a pretty good job distracting these forces away, but unfortunately he is taking some damage. He's losing the armory. So he's taking quite a bit of damage. He should probably... I think he's going to be attacking fairly soon. Vermind, on the other hand, is... He is doing a great job breaking out of here. Unfortunately, he is going to have to worry about these ATHCs, and I think this is exactly what Haiku is going for, is to try to bait a breakout... Oh, excuse me. Hmm. Trying to bait a breakout, and then following an attempted breakout, attack south. Once it gets... I ex expect once... The positioning of these forces gets to the unplayable past. Haiku will go over there, though he doesn't have a bookmark to actually make that happen. And with the forces that Vermite has, he's actually built up some defensive forces. But no, Haiku has exactly done that. He waited, he sent the orders already, and it's on the red time wave. So that is where a lot of the damage is being dealt. And that is actually doing a pretty good job. The Zion Turcher is taking a lot of damage, but it cannot cloak. ATCs are detectors, and the Zion Turcher is going down. And, like I said, the forces had broken out. They were doing a fair amount of damage, but these ATHCs will be able to at least slow them down a bit further. And the economy now taking a lot of damage. Vermind losing a lot of its forces to this, but Haiku is losing all of everything he has. Not to mention the Zion Veer. I totally missed that. I'm sorry. I, I apologize, viewers, that I missed the Zion Veer heroically destroying Haiku's entire infrastructure inside his own base. And completely countering this, breaking out. Why did I think he was going for an expansion? That was just silly of me. Because he was going, actually for a subversive attack, getting rid of Haiku's base under his nose. Now, Haiku's doing a decent job dealing with what exists here, but unfortunately, the forces are coming back to finish off what he has in, in this base, and that will be it. I think Vermine has this game. Haiku still has a bit of a chance, but it's going to be very tough. I don't, I don't see it being easy. Being that these foundations are here, and the depot's here, all he can try to do is bait another breakout and then punish it. But that's going to be difficult to do. If he gets rid of the Teth Pulsar, it'll become a lot easier. But even then, he gets to get rid of the Teth Veer afterwards. And that makes it still harder. And the Zion Veer is destroying the economy. There's nothing that Haiku can really do about this without sacrificing his position up front. And the Teth Veer has been exposed. And going down before the Lancer, the Lancer will actually have free reign on this one. But it probably won't matter all that much. Vermite has a stronger economy. Haiku's economy is being gone. I mean, it's kind of ironic that Haiku is playing a strategy that requires that essentially that he makes Vermine's economy grow slower, and Vermine's the one ensuring that this happens to Haiku. That is just... That is annoying for Haiku, I'm sure. But Haiku did win game one, so this is going to go probably to... Well, this is going to be a game three, most likely. Unless Haiku pulls something out of his hat, but I don't think he has anything 
in store. At this point, he's losing a lot of his resources. His back-end infrastructure is gone. His contain is gone. And Haiku has thrown the towel. That is game two. So game three will be following us shortly. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Gagron fans, to Game 3 of the Vermine vs. Haiku Round 1 series. This is the last game in the series, no matter who wins. And we are going to be playing this match, on, or watching this match being played, on Kratoria. Let us begin. So, Haiku is at the... Sorry, Vermine's in the northeast corner of the map, Haiku's in the southwest corner of the map, and Haiku is probably going for CISO. There it is, Vermine likely for Vekir, and there it is. So these are not the random players. Or if they are, they have a very strange luck. Now, so far we've seen Vermine primarily go for economy strategy, while Haiku, on the other hand, has been largely going for very rush-based strategies. Now, Haiku, he won once and lost once. Of course, the second time Vermine did spot it. I'm curious what he'll go for on Kratoria. Being that Kratoria does have these teleporters here, and he is moving his infantry forward, I would not be surprised if he did go for a proxy and tried to use the teleporters to power it even better. We'll see what he's up to, though. Vermin, on the other hand, I wonder if how wary he'll be getting about going for heavy economy. Now, in Akron, going for heavy economy is a good idea. It's typically a good idea. If you know that your opponent is going for a rush, there are ways to counter it, and it's a lot easier to counter if you have a decent economic base. Now, given that players start with three RPs, there is already kind of a decent economic base to begin with. But, it's... Like, it's not as unsafe as it used to be. You still have some economy to fall back on, but it's something you want to make sure that you have a better economic base on because it just makes it easier. So proxies are not the easiest thing to do, but it can be done as we saw in game one. Granted, Act Natural is a fairly small map compared to Kratoria or Tomb of Heroes. And it looks like Haiku is not going for too much of a proxy. He has a bit of a forward factory, but that's not unusual. It looks like he's just trying to claim this natural expansion very quickly. He's already built an RP here as well. This... This does not look like proxy. This looks like Haiku is going for late, mid to late game play, and he wants to make sure that he has secured this expansion right off the bat. Although he is moving armories further forward, so we'll see. It looks like he is definitely pushing more aggressively, and he's moving towards the teleporter, so from that point, it will be anyone's guess, though quite possibly moving over here. If he builds a factory over here, then we, or over here somewhere, then we know it's a proxy. Now, on the other hand, Vermind, about 20 seconds down from there, is going for a straightforward scouting pattern. In fact, missing this base, interestingly. He is not noticing the factory. He does, okay, he does see the factory. He has seen that. Apparently just changing his orders because he knows that that's there. He wants to check around, make sure there are no other proxies. Kratoria is a very flat map. It's a map that has a lot of places to actually build buildings on. So, proxies can happen almost anywhere. It's difficult to scout for them. Now, Haiku, like I said, he is... Okay, there we go. Three armories right next to the teleporters, but out of view. So, Vermine is actually unable to see these armories. Haiku is going for this. He is going for this hard. Massive infantry strategy. Going to teleport them right into Vermine's base. Extremely clever, and not at all surprising given what Haiku has been doing this entire tournament so far. He has been in love with proxy strategies, and he clearly knows what to do with them on Kratoria. Now, Vermine, on the other hand does not seem to expect this. He might see this factory. He sees the factory. He might expect that it's just Haiku trying to secure this, but at this point, that would be naive. I'm sure Vermind is very suspicious. Getting an RP on here and getting more Zion beers. Yes, Vermind is definitely suspicious. He thinks something is up. He is right to think so. And Haiku is building up. He has his armory set up. He has more than enough resources to start pumping out infantry. He is not getting a whole lot of factory units. But he... Doesn't seem to be focusing on that too much. And teleporting his units back, getting rid of Haiku's... Oh, sorry, getting rid of Vermine's defense... Well, defensive offense. His scout forces, basically. Getting rid of the reconnaissance there from Vermind, and Haiku continuing to build up, getting another importer. Yeah, I could see that. Definitely could use another importer. Getting two more importers. I expect a couple more, fat, or a couple more armories are going to be in order at this point. Which is not at all surprising. So Haiku trying to make absolutely sure that he has the reserves for this. Even if Vermine does try to get rid of the importers he knows about. I.e. the one in this base. And at this point I think Vermine is going to be in a very tricky position. 
Now, Vermind does have... Well, he does have a better ability to defend. Vekir is quite good at defense. He can build foundations. I think... I wouldn't be surprised if he built that. I see that he does have another Zion Veer. It looks like he is... Can you just scout out? He does have his... Okay, he's going for the same thing he did in Tomb of Heroes, except with the Shinveer and Tethveer, getting rid of this importer here, making sure that he has that set up for the economy and everything, so that he can get rid of Haiku's economy under his nose. But Haiku, as I mentioned, has enough spare importers that he's already prepared for this. He probably anticipated that coming... Or at the very least, figured, well, have spare importers. It's just safer that way. And that's the main bottleneck for producing CISO inventory, is the presence of importers. So Haiku is definitely being quite smart about this. Now, on the other hand, Vermind is getting his foundation up. He is getting his defenses up. This is about, they're about the same time, by the way. They aren't too far apart from each other. Haiku's not too far in the past. Vermind getting a depot around the four minute mark. And that is going to go down very quickly. Vermine just teleporting in a few infantry. They are dealing enough damage to get rid of that deep before it builds up. Vermine is in a tight spot. He, I don't know if he's going to go back and try to build that depot sooner. I mean, Zion Veer... There we go. Zion Veer is thinking... Zion Veer would be a good idea to build that at this point. That'd be probably the safest thing to go for. And he... Will he go for another foundation? No, he's going for another RP. He's not changing that RP construction. Not sure if he's going to go for a depot, try to get it as early as possible. We'll see if the foundation gets built up right away, but it looks like he's going for Zion Veer Defense Foundation supported. And yes, he has a foundation. He looks like he's actually built another foundation, trying to avoid the first one. And there we go. The foundation support Zion Veers are fighting for another foundation to be built. Unfortunately, one of the Zion Veers has... Both Zion Veers have gone down. Vermind... Looks like he's trying to position them a bit better to get out of the way. Haiku, on the other hand, he's going to have more and more forces coming in. And it looks like... Vermind trying to get those forces distracted before getting towards them. And... Design Veer healed up by two foundations. Not even then enough to get rid of the Marines and Special Ops. CISO Inventory. That is CISO Inventory, ladies and gentlemen. They are very powerful. Do not take them lightly. Heck... Half a dozen CISO infantry will take care of a couple Zion Pulsers, no problem. It's pretty scary, actually. So it looks like Vermind at the Unplayable Pass to Edge does not have a whole lot of options. Building more Zion Veer to try to continue to defend against this. Able to get rid of another Marine. He might actually have a chance here, but I think it's going to be very difficult to secure this. At this point, Haiku can continue sending in forces with impunity. And he's not even trying to. He's not even needing to at this point. Losing another Marine, and that is... That is game. I think this is it. I think Haiku has won this match. We do see yet one more Zion Veer. A bit more effort coming in. And actually, Vermind not quite done yet. Vermind has managed to turn this around. But unfortunately, Haiku does have... Or for Vermind, rather. Haiku does have another set of forces coming in. And they are going to likely finish this off. Getting to the last foundation. Hitting the depot hard. But the depot is already mostly built. However, enough firepower appears to be in place. A foundation to heal it up. Very good idea. I think that will roughly balance it out. So the depot should last long enough that a Zion Pulsar can be built. And Zion Pulsar being started up, it has 20 seconds. It needs only 20 seconds to be built up. And it looks like it won't even have that. The depot going to go down before it's even constructed. And that is it. I think. We'll see. Vermine has jumped back once again to try to do what he can. Getting a Zion Veer. Looks like he might be trying to just do a very quick deployment. Using the Zion Veer to get a very quick Zion Pulsar. We'll see if that works. I think it might. Or is he turning into a Zion Pulsar? I don't know. Looks like... No, he's trying to use that to defend outright rather than turning into a Zion Pulsar. Using the depot to tank instead. And that appears to have been the right strategy. Vermind getting rid of Haiku's next wave of force. But unfortunately, another wave coming in. This one with Special Ops. Vermind has a bit more of a chance of getting a Zion Pulsar now. And healing up this depot. More, yet more Zion Pulsars coming in, but Haiku has now teleported more forces actually not to there. He teleported more forces elsewhere. We'll see where he teleported them to. And it looks like he is probably going to teleport them to support, I would imagine. He might be teleporting them back down to his main base over here. But I expect he's probably going to teleport them more likely over to Haiku's base. No, he has not yet teleported them. He is still getting them into position before the teleport. This will be interesting. Now, Vermin, on the other hand, he does have his depot getting... It's about one-third or a quarter health. No, a third health now. He is getting it healed up. 
slowly but surely building it up and well aware of where it's likely going but moving out haiku taking this advantage taking perfect advantage of this opportunity the zion pulsar in transit out of the base nothing to defend another zion pulsar has been built and vermind building yet another zion veer to help defend as well but these foundations are going down quickly the depot however does have half its health left it does have a fair amount of time on it to stay alive the zion pulsar as well to help out but unfortunately zion pulsar not a particularly tough unit very strong not very tough and i think I know I've been repeating this. Vermine doing a great job. I got okay. I got to commend Vermine. He's doing a really good job pushing this off. He is holding this off brilliantly. I mean, this is about three waves so far. They have held off with very clutch timing, very clutch use of units, very clever use of Zion Veer when he needed it, and the foundations and everything. I mean, he has a stronger economy than the Haiku does, and it, he did destroy Haiku's economy in his main base, and he has been just harassing in the background, just doing what he can to stem the tide as best he can and the Zion Pulsar has walked in as well and this Marine the last force hitting or the two last Marines the last things hitting and Vermine he is building another Zion Veer to deal with this a uh, foundation is supported the foundation is going to go down but it, the important thing is that it does distract these Marines it's still kind of expensive but since it distracts the Marines that still gives Vermine a chance and Vermine got rid of one importer a second importer is going to go down fairly shortly and Haiku, at this point, probably going to try to just go for the kill. Not going to worry about his base too much, but he kind of needs to. I mean, he's already lost two importers. One importer left. Although, no, that's not the only importer left. He has other importers. I can tell because there is more resources on screen than would be contained. There we go. There's the other importer. So he does have yet another importer that's safe. But the infrastructure to send in these wave after wave of unit is starting to go down. If Vermind can defend, I think, two more waves, like this wave and the next wave then he should be able to turn this around, or at least have a decent chance of turning it around. He's doing a good job with harassment with these units, though. Unfortunately, this Tethvir looks like it got a bit snagged on that armory. But he d his Zion Veer here, this Zion Veer is key. If that gets built up and actually... Oh, it's actually not being built up right now. Okay, but the point is, if the Zion Veer does ultimately get built up, that will be... Well, I don't know if it'll actually do the trick. It will get rid of one of these Marines. It'll kill this one. It'll... To do a number on the second. And it is able to get rid of the first one. Or Yes, there we go. That got rid of the first one. And the second one is about to go down too. Now, at this point, looks like Vermind has actually lost. He did lose that Zion Pulsar. The infantry did defend, but that does hold off that wave. It does actually reduce the force of that wave too. So Vermind has a bit more of a chance to defend his main base. But unfortunately, his main base is nowhere to be found. Vermind has lost his main base. That Annex going down to the last Marine... With his tenacity getting rid of that annex, and I think Vermind. I don't know if he has any more tricks up his sleeve. He does have a Shinveer and a Tethveer. They are dealing with damage they can. And of course, the Shinveer could rebuild foundations. And unfortunately, it's dead. So that's no good. I don't think he has, he has no current energy to help defend this. He does, however, have more foundations. Distracting this Marine just long enough. Getting a Zion Veer, and this Marine distracted on the foundation. Haiku. He's not actually paying attention at this point in time. He appears to be convinced he's won. Vermind still able to get out of this, and this Zion Veer saves the day. Vermind has not lost yet. Haiku is still keeping it up. However, he is still pushing in more and more waves of forces, and still actually defending against this Teth Veer and Shin Veer. So, unfortunately, Vermind has lost everything that he was using to harass behind, but he still did a really good job getting rid of Importer, 3 RPs. Not anything around here, but that's not a big deal. And again, we have a couple of orders up here as well. So definitely reducing the forces coming in. But it's not over yet. There's the depot. I don't know if this is going to become an, AI, an aerial control center or something else. I mean, at this point, Vermont has actually been... He's already... Wow, he's used up an entire box worth of resources. He has lasted... I mean, this has been... This has been 10 minutes of relentless assault, and Vermind has held it off. And another wave coming in. The depot is just done, and unfortunately, the Zion Veer has gone down, so that will not be able to turn into a Zion Pulsar... But looks like that Zion Veer might be moved back. Another Zion Veer is being deployed. The Zion Veer might be moved back to stay alive a bit longer. But no, it doesn't appear to be the case. But the important thing, as you can see, as you can see in this entire game, the really important thing is that there is basically... Oh my goodness. I mean, Vermind is doing a great job demonstrating the power of distraction in this game. I mean, 
Look at, he's lost a lot of units, yes, but he's still in the game. I mean, at this point, it looks like this might be the last wave, but I don't even want to call it yet because of the amount of times that I've said that and have been proven wrong. However, five Marines without any real counterforce, and this Zion Pulsar will fire off two shots before dying. One shot, not even two. Able to get rid of the Marines, but unfortunately, that's not even enough firepower. If this Zion Veer, ow, looks like if the Zion Veer gets... Sorry, my legs seized up for a second. If the Zion Veer gets in the... No, he doesn't even have a chance to get in the depot. Unfortunately for Vermine, that is not able to get in, but... Wow, I mean... Just... Just the amount of tenacity Vermine is showing is amazing. So I think that... I think that whoever... Whoever loses Vermine won. I mean... Yeah, Haiku looks like he is going to actually win the tournament match. I mean, Vermine still has another chance. He's still going to be in the loser bracket, so he's going to have... This is a double elimination tournament, by the way. There is still another chance for everyone who loses in this round to continue playing, and possibly even win the entire tournament. But it appears that Vermine has ultimately lost with no way out, but my goodness, that was the absolute best loss I have seen in a very long time. I mean, I know there was actually a recent match with Vikarin that had a really good loss as well. Really good way of holding off the enemy at the gates, but still, this was amazing. Like, not to take any credit away from Vermine, that was extremely well done. As much as, yeah, he didn't win the game, but holy crap, he did an awesome job. So, hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and I will have another series, Electro vs. J Raccoon, shortly. So, just to review just a bit, we see that this point... Vermind and Haiku has matched up, so whoever loses between Chitin and the winner of Shadow Fury, or myself and Aragant, will be fighting Vermind. Sorry, the loser of between that match will be fighting Vermind. And... Wait, really? Loser? Yeah, I guess that's how it works. Yep. Okay, so whoever loses against Chitin here, from whoever wins between the two of us, will end up fighting Vermind. And Haiku will end up finding God. So Haiku going up against the best player in the tournament. This is going to be interesting when we get to that, but we will be getting to that in at least a week. For now, J Raccoon versus Electro. We'll be back with that in just a few minutes, so stay tuned.